This is Sir Isaac Newton and his famous experiment with the prism. He famously shows how white light is composed of three different colors, red, green and blue. And in order to study this, Newton used a dark isolated room and controlled conditions. When light passed through Newton's prism, the color spectrum emerged. Now, to study the spectrum further, he isolated one of the colors and had it pass through a prism again. And only the isolated color emerged. For Newton, this was proof that he had reached the final division of this ray of light. Eventually, based on these experiments and detailed geometric descriptions, Newton concluded that color is a property of light, which consists of different size particles. It is a strict and cold analysis, the scientific method of today, totally excluding the subject from the experiments. For these kinds of scientists like Newton, the subject is to be taken out of the equation. They believe that we can study only the object and that fundamentally the subject and object are inherently different. Now, Goethe, the famous poet and presumed philosopher, however, who studied colors for more than 40 years, had a problem with the methods of Newton. Since, according to Goethe, the behavior of light should not be studied in these unnatural conditions, but in a natural environment and in relation to the perception of the subject. In his extensive study of light, Goethe found the idea of color being a property of light quite ridiculous. Look at this picture for example. Now, where is the color? If it is a light, let's add light. But then, the color disappears. Now, we subtract light and color also disappears. So where is the color? And what does this theory of color have to do with philosophy? We will find the answer in Goethe's study of color. Goethe borrowed some prisms from a friend, as you do, and he set out to recreate the experiments of Newton. Now, he also put a prism between a window and a white wall, and expected to see the color spectrum of Newton. But he did not. He only saw the white wall. What he did notice, however, is that when he looked through the prism from the other side and at the window, he could see color at the interface between the light and the darkness. He did the same again, but now with a white square against a dark background. And here he found the same results. Color only emerges at the boundary between light and darkness. Red to yellow above and blue to cyan below. He called these colors the boundary colors. It is these colors that we see when we look at the setting sun where the light meets the darkness. Based on these variations, Goethe concluded that light is not the absence of darkness and that color is not a property of light, but rather, contrary to Newton, that color is the result of the interplay between light and darkness as observed by the subject. We can see here the echoes of the reciprocal determination of Fichte, which is not that surprising since Fichte and Goethe knew each other very closely. We can see that the one determines the other and the other way around. There is not only a ray of light or a ray of darkness. There is only ever a ray of light if it is surrounded by darkness. And as Goethe had already tried to show in the contributions, the emergence of colors requires a coincidence of light and darkness, or, as he now says, of light and non-light. Light itself is not visible as such, but only that which it illuminates. In order to become visible, it must enter into reciprocal action with non-light, 
so that something new emerges. Color. Goethe did the same experiment again, but now with a special prism that is able to open and close. Now we can see the boundary colors arise as the prism opens. We can see the birth of the colors. Red to yellow above, blue to cyan below. But no green yet. So now we make the square a more narrow slit. And when we continue going upwards, the colors start to mix. The yellow and blue mix and the color green emerges. Newton's spectrum only arises as a specific phase, as a part. It is again the distribution of light and darkness that determines which colors emerge. Where Newton was concerned with a static description, Goethe explored it as a dynamic process. Now, there is not only the boundary where light meets darkness, but also where darkness meets the light. So now, when we have both a white square on a black background and a black square on a white background, we create both a dark spectrum and a light spectrum. The dark spectrum with the red and blue, the light spectrum with the lighter colors like pale yellow and magenta. Newton did thus only study a part of the color spectrum and was not concerned with other colors, because his fundamental theory did not account for this. Incorporating these two spectra results in what Goethe called his harmonic color wheel of complementary colors. This harmonic circle gives all the general rules of our color perception. From the dark red we decrease in intensity towards the yellow. And from the violet blue we decrease in intensity to a light blue green. It is these color gradients that we see everywhere in nature. Whether it is in the temperature dependence of cooling metal, the setting sun under the night sky, or the leaves on a tree wilting in autumn. We are part of the world of colors, and through them we gain knowledge of the world, and thus of ourselves. Now, Goethe was not only interested in colors emerging from a prism, but also in what he called physiological colors. These are the colors as experienced by the human eye, where the color is in the eye of the beholder. Colors which cannot be measured by scientific devices or calculations, but only exist in the experience of the subject. It is in this most valuable work that Goethe links color theory to philosophy. So, let us study this philosophy with two examples. Colored shadows and accidental colors. The setup is as follows. We have a cone and two light sources on either side. We illuminate the cone with white light. First from the left and then from the right. Notice a shadow emerging on each side of the cone. But now we change the color of the left light to a green filtered light source. Now everything is bathed in the green light, except for the shadow. But now when we switch on the white light on the right, something extraordinary happens. A magenta shade is created in the shadow. If we would zoom in until there is no context left, the shadow is grey. We could not measure this magenta shade with any scientific tool known to mankind. It is only in the subject. And this magenta is green's complementary color. It is the mind that brings into existence the complementary color to create a wholeness where there is none. It is the archetype in the subject that brings forth the whole 
Out of the Parts. For the next experiment, I would like to ask you to participate yourself. To do so, stare at this yellow color on the screen. Try and have the yellow take as much as your visual field as possible. So, what Goethe believed is that while you are absorbing this color, your mind is striving for wholeness. The same wholeness that we saw in the previous experiment. Even if you don't know it yet, it will become apparent in a second. And we will give this a 30 seconds or something, and then what we will do is switch to a white background. So, there we go. And there you have it, a violet hue. It is not white, but violet. The complementary color of yellow. It is the complementary color that the eye brings forward to create a wholeness where there is only the parts. And now I hope that this also shows why Goethe called his methods a participatory method. We have now seen the two instances of the interplay between object and subject in regards to color and the complementary colors. But why on earth is this related to philosophy? Have you noticed the difference between the two examples? Between the colored shadows and accidental colors? The difference between them is that the first is simultaneous and the second is successive. In other words, that means that we have found an intuition that is not dependent on time. We have found an intuition that can see the whole in the parts and intuit the parts from the whole. And this is precisely the critique of Goethe on the work of Kant. Where, for Kant, no other form of knowledge was possible for the subject than that in representations bound by space and time. Goethe has shown, however, that we do in fact have intellectual intuition, that is, that we bear in our minds the idea or essence. That when seeing the part, we intuit the whole, and the other way around. Goethe has obviously described something which is independent of whether it manifests itself within the subject or externally to the subject. Something which is higher than both, and which one may call the essence of color, a totality or whole which always manifests itself as a polarity, yet without compromising its inner unity. Every single color remains dependent on the totality and solicits the missing color of the whole to which it essentially belongs. For Goethe, we did not come into this world as separate subjects in opposition to objects. No, we came out of this world. Whether it is the intuition to see the archetypal plant, as seen in the last video, or the intuition of color. This is precisely what Goethe's position is. We should recognize that we are parts of a whole. The phenomenon is never just the phenomenon or thing in itself. The subject always participates in the experiment. It is a part of the experiment. It is thus not, as in Spinoza and Kant, that the subject is separate from the noumenal realm. In fact, according to Goethe, there is no need to go beyond the phenomenal realm. There is no veil, no difference between object and subject. There is only nature in constant transition ever becoming. And rolling up and down did go, the all and one eternal thing, ever changing, ever constant. Thank you for watching this video. And also thank you for the 10,000 subscribers who apparently like to torture themselves with abstract philosophy, just as much as I like to do to myself. Looking at the insanely large amount of interesting, smart and well-written comments, 
my faith in humanity is restored. And if you stuck around long enough to hear this, I do honestly appreciate you as my fellow human being. And I hope that something good happens to you today. And to see you in the next video.